The Prince of Precaution, Big Tim's Little Monster. Big Tim was the Prince of Precaution. One fine spring day, while exploring the dark cave of Mint Fry Lane, he saw an angry, green, warty monster. He ran back to town as quick as he could to warn everyone of the diabolical danger. Prince Tim told everyone what he had seen. The monster had big eyes, said Prince Tim. They could petrify you if you looked into them. The monster had really sharp teeth, said Prince Tim, with a golden venomous fang that could poison you. The monster had great arms with daggers for claws, said Prince Tim. They could rip a man in half. But that was not the worst, said Tim. The monster also had foul death breath that could kill you on the spot. We have to stop him, said Prince Tim, before he kills us all. Based on Prince Tim's alarming description, everyone agreed to help, so they got started. First, they formed a committee, and then there was an ideas forum. A new monster tax was introduced to finance the work. Workshops were held to discuss the occupational health and safety matters, the environmental impact, and the human resources issues. The government appointed ambassadors to keep everyone motivated. Community meetings were held, and movies were screened. And lastly, an advertising campaign was run to let everyone know what was going on. In the following autumn, the work began in earnest. The blacksmith stopped making ploughs and horseshoes and started making swords and shields. The farmers stopped tending their farms and started building catapults. The bakers stopped baking bread and joined the army. The doctors stopped looking for new medical cures and worked on an antidote for the monster's deadly venom and poisonous breath. The engineers stopped looking after the roads, railways, buildings and dams and worked on a special creature capture and storage machine to catch the monster and a powerful light to illuminate the cave. The park managers suspended backburning and clearing to attend monster information sessions. The bureaucrats stopped shuffling red papers and started shuffling green papers. The geologists, who knew something about the history of the cave, called for Prince Tim to provide some hard evidence of the monster's existence. But, as no one would listen to them, they shook their heads in disbelief and went back to work. Meanwhile, as they all toiled through the long, harsh winter, the crops failed and people went hungry. The horses went lame, fires raged, the cities fell apart, and diseases spread. But Prince Tim was always on hand with the latest computer models that demonstrated the severity of the impending doom, so everyone struggled on. In summer, they were finally ready, and Prince Tim led the charge. They entered the dark, gloomy cave, and as if by magic, the monster appeared. It seemed to be just as Prince Tim had described. Certainly has big eyes, said the blacksmith. Don't look into them, or you'll be petrified. It's got really sharp teeth, stammered the bakers, shivering in fear. I can see its golden fang, screamed one of the bureaucrats, hiding at the rear. It's got great arms and daggers for claws, yelped the ambassadors, sounding defeated. Please don't rip us in half, they fervently bleated. It's got a brown bushman's hat and beard, muttered one of the farmers, squinting through the gloom. A brown bushman's hat and beard, they exclaimed. Turn on the powerful light, they all shouted. With the light on, suddenly the angry, green, warty monster vanished, and Prince Tim stood in its place, looking embarrassed and confused. It seems that Prince Tim has some explaining to do. As they marched back to town to start cleaning up, Everyone agreed that the geologists had been right. We'll never listen to Prince Tim again, they said. Ever since, whenever someone ran into town claiming the world was about to end, the people of precaution asked for evidence. And remember, they say, 
the strength of the evidence should be proportional to the size of the threat. And from that day on, the town was known as Prudence. The end. For a paperback copy, for yourself, or your local school or library, contact littleskepticspress at gmail.com. Thank you for your time.